Let's go. Everyone hates Tesla. This is going to be another good one. We're going to be watching a couple of clips today. We got to talk about something's popping off in China and then something else is happening. But I don't think it's actually real. But net net at the end of the day, let's get into it. I want you guys to see the miracle of Elon. I always got to show it because people don't want to listen. Attention all operators on countdown one. This is the final go no go poll for Starship Flight 4. Stage one, go. Stage two, go. Stage by two, go. Flight directors, go for launch. We have liftoff. Vehicle is pushing down range. Come on, man. It don't get better than that. The <laughs> United States of America at its finest. Just your engine cut off. Shipping. Man, Tesla is just amazing. Oh, my gosh. Elon is the best thing that ever happened to America. Guys, let's dive straight into the video. But I did want to read this. I guess on the news, people were going back. Now, this is very interesting. Thanks to the Chinese government and the CCP out here, Tesla cars have been included on the Chinese local government's list of electric vehicles that can be bought by public party and government groups for the first time. But So this is for the first time. So this is a change from previously, okay? Tesla is the only foreign-owned car manufacturer on the list published by the eastern province of Zhukasai, all right, so that's a big difference. That's a big change in the game. Now, let's see what people are saying. I want to go in the comment section. You know, Twitter, you got to watch out for Twitter. People just probably in the comments being a hater, but let's kind of see what they're saying in the comments. Yeah, mind if I do? Only 80 million people in blank. Great, fine. Okay, cool. And then this tells you everything you need to know. China is using Tesla's vehicle and copying in Tesla. And then China is winning the EV race. Where does it put Tesla then? At the very top. Okay, interesting. Elon's diplomacy with the leadership in China is perhaps the most underrated geopolitical value add for any company ever. And I think also he just offers a good product. So, you know, the Chinese government is going to work with him a little bit more versus any other industry leaders like Apple, right? They can just copy and paste Apple. Shout out to Huawei. Now, let's see this. The Chinese love Teslas more than American do. It breaks my heart. And then not for much longer, though. Exactly. That is pretty sad that actually Chinese companies and Chinese consumers love Teslas more than actual Americans. Like, I'm telling you, this is why American companies don't think that there is any benefit of being loyal to Americans. There's literally none. You could build the biggest factory in America. You can bring more jobs back. You know, Americans often complain about this, right? You can give them all of that. You know, once again, the Tesla is the most American car in America, meaning the majority of the car is made in America, manufactured, vertical integration, all businesses, vendors, and suppliers mostly are in America. And still, do Americans care? Nope. Do they have some loyalty to the company because of that? Nope. Don't care. They want to feel vibrations underneath the booty cheek, so they want to stay with the engines. China is not afraid of competition. They embrace it and learn from the competitors, something that many governments should learn. There's simply too much at stake. True. And likely because there's a significant number of powerful government guys who love having a Tesla. They understand quality and appreciate it. Wow. All being done to avoid Tesla's approaching India market. Well done, Chinese. China, basically. They recognize the mover of this era. Yeah, of course. Basically because it is China's automotive, automotive, just as Tesla in the U.S. is most Americans built. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> People, when they write a sentence, right? Oh, my gosh. I'm not the best, too, so I'm not here to clown, clown, clown to anybody else, right? So here we go. You know, you know, I think it matters if you have a good relationship with the government of the country and you are considered a trustworthy business person. So pretty, pretty positive com comments in this section. But then at the end of the day, I think that it's good news for Tesla across the board. And it's always good to have good diplomatic relations with the countries you're doing business in. 
So what is everybody thinking about when it comes down to this autonomous day and what's going to happen? Now, Elon has already came out and said false. He just said these words, but we're still going to go ahead and see what this the Tesla space has to say. Fair use. Today's episode, how Elon will destroy Uber with their own founder. Q2 delivery numbers shock Wall Street and Tesla reveals their full self-cleaning vehicle. What if I told you that the same person who founded Uber will lead Tesla's robotaxi network to world domination? Put on your tinfoil hats. This is a wild one. If we are right on this, then important pieces of the robotaxi puzzle will be coming together in front of your eyes. The robotaxi unveiling event is getting closer, 8th of August, and knowing how Elon operates, I assume there's a frenzy going on at Tesla to make everything happen at the last minute. Elon likes to leave some breadcrumbs, and the latest in his trail is Elon following Travis Kalanick on X this Monday. Yes, this is the guy who founded Uber. Now, why would Elon do that, especially considering Travis hasn't posted anything since 2019? Well, Travis has a long history with self-driving cars, and what we've found is that he has been wanting to join forces with Elon on the RoboTaxi project more than once. Now, this is the only connection that we have, okay? There's, there hasn't been any official statements, and so it's very interesting that we go this far, but I guess we got a lot of time on our hands across the board, and we want to create content, so this is where we're at right now. But again, I'm not mad or angry that people are looking for answers, looking to uh, kind of discover information before the actual day, the op autonomous day. So it's pretty interesting, but do I think it's possible? Hey, anything's possible. Even though Elon replied back to this narrative and said false, still don't know. Back in the day, Travis was tied down to Uber, but not anymore. In 2015, Travis said to Steve Jurvetson, then a board member of Tesla, in 2020, if Teslas are autonomous, I want to buy all of them. All 500,000 of the estimated 2020 production, I want them all. Well, Teslas weren't autonomous in 2020, but that's a whole other story. Jurvetson said that Travis apparently couldn't get a return call from Elon, so around this point is when he started developing his own self-driving cars with Uber. In 2016, we saw Travis again explain why it is so important for Uber to bet on self-driving. It starts with understanding that the world is going to go self-driving and autonomous. So if that's happening, what would happen if we weren't a part of that future? If we weren't a part of the autonomy thing, then the future passes us by basically in a very expeditious and efficient way. If we are not tied for first, then the person who is in first or the entity that's in first then rolls out a ride-sharing network that is far cheaper or far higher quality than Uber's, then Uber is no longer a, th a thing. And that would be us. We'll read that again. If we are not tied first, right and then the person who is in first or the entity that's in first then rolls out the ride sharing network that is far cheaper or far higher quality than ubers then uber is no longer a thing longer a thing in 2016 after seeing apple invest one billion dollars into a chinese competitor called diddy travis says he called elon musk again with a proposal to team up i said now of course what happened with that right what happened with diddy not the rapper, but <laughs> with this joint venture, right? Apple invests $1 billion in a Chinese ride hailing service, Diddy. See, again, this is proof. Here we go, Apple. All you guys got Apple products. You're very loyal to Apple. But Apple can manufacture its products in Asia and across the world and only sell retail and design in America. So factories are overseas. Here you go but you're still loyal. And then Apple can invest a billion dollars into Chinese companies, not American companies, not American factories, but you guys are still loyal to Apple. Are you loyal to Tesla? No. And even if you want to be loyal to Tesla, they call you a fanboy, but they just start calling you names. You could fill in the blank with the name. So isn't that interesting? Again, American corporations, I'm not against it, but I'm just saying this is the reality. Where is the allegiance? Where is the respect? Where is the prioritization for a company that invests in the nation? Here you go. We want jobs in factories. 
brought back to America. Tesla does it. Do the majority of Americans say, you know what? I'm going to buy a car and it's going to be a Tesla because they have shown that they are willing to invest in America. And better yet, Apple obviously would prefer to invest in Chinese ride hailing services called Diddy. Okay. But we don't get that type of support from the American populace across the whole as a macro. Right. I think that if the Chinese government can put a Tesla car on the list for government officials and et cetera, why aren't we utilizing Teslas for government vehicles? Right. That should be the number one vehicle, in my opinion. State, federal, the most American car will be the car that we utilize in the government. If I was the government and in the government, I would make that rule. I'd be like, look, if you could be the most American companies, only the most American companies, and again, meaning your product is produced mostly in America, you will be prioritized for contract selection and we would utilize your vehicles for our government vehicles. Because what? Why? Why? Why would I use Ford? Why would I use GM? Why would I use Chrysler? Why would I use Mercedes or any other car that doesn't have factories in America? Interesting. Editor called Diddy. Travis says he called Elon Musk again with a proposal to team up. I said, look, man, we should partner. Travis goes on to say Elon spent the rest of the call convincing me that it's too far out and it's not realistic that I should just stick to what we do best and be focused or I'm going to F it all up. That's when I knew Tesla was competing. By the end of 2017, Travis Kalanick was ousted as the CEO of Uber. Leading up to that departure, he also sold his stock in the company. We won't dig deeper into that. In 2020, Uber's self-driving unit was sold off to Aurora Technologies. Now that we know the story, do you think Travis might have just been ahead of his time with the robo-taxi plans for Uber? On Travis's side, joining Tesla to build the Uber 2.0 on top of the Tesla robo-taxi capabilities sounds like a dream or vision rather come true. On Elon's side, bringing in a visionary who built Uber to what it is and someone who could already see the big picture seven years ago might be exactly what he needs. This could ensure the success of the consumer side of Tesla Robotaxi operations and also the success of the ride-hailing network, which uses the existing Tesla fleet whenever owners want to send their Teslas to work. Sounds like the perfect combo for the Robotaxi wave. Now, personally, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla has already hired Kalanick as head of Robotaxi network and will announce this on August 8th. We found three ways Travis and Elon have connected over the years. One, they sat together in then President Trump's advisory council in 2017, which both. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, continue. Later quit. Two, just this April, Elon hosted a dinner with David Sachs at Sachs's. Elon Musk ho hosted an anti Biden dinner party. Here's who attended. Like, okay, that's Cap. <laughs> um, I highly doubt the party was an anti Biden party. Like, Man, we show us proof. All right. Who is this who wrote this? What news? Kelly Rizman. Show us the proof. I want to see invitations that said anti Biden dinner party. RSVP. I want to see that. I want to see proof. Don't make these statements without any proof. Okay. So we know this guy, Kelly R. Lied on Thursday, the 2nd, May 2024 at 2136 BST time. Come on, show me proof. This house in Hollywood Hills with Kalanick on the guest list. Three, and this one goes way back, but it could even be considered funny in today's circumstances. Elon tweeted this out in 2013 about ordering a Tesla Model S on Uber together with Travis and Shervin. This also. Okay, that's interesting. That's a little bit more interesting. But Elon did say false, but he didn't say. He just said false, so we don't know. Gives us the only picture of the two together. So, does all this mean Uber is going down? Success and whatever you want to... Nobody cares, man. They're always trying to sell you something, right? 80% of the success is internal. That's true. What they think of it. Uber and Tesla have partnered before, as many Uber drivers are using Teslas to do so, and the companies have offered incentives to make their vehicles more accessible for drivers. Uber is all... 
Well, hopefully we can get something going on like that, but we're not quite sure. You know, this is speculation. So we're going to move past speculation and we're going to look at deliverance. Right? We have been delivered. Tesla deliveries beyond expectation. Right. So let's move past guessing, right? Plan PIs. And let's look at the numbers quarter on Tuesday, and we can see that the company delivered a total of 443,956 vehicles. Now, that's good for vehicles. I'm not really going crazy about that. But of course, if they went under, people would have went crazy for that. And I did still see headlines say that Tesla didn't even actually meet the number. And I'm like, man, geez, Louise, give it a break. So let's look at this. And this is something I'm going to cover in another video where it's like, look, look at how much gigawatts were deployed 9.4 energy storage products in quarter two the highest quarterly deployment yet hopefully q3 does the same now it's kind of hard when it comes down to the deliveries you know different projects have different completion dates so it's not like you know when you're looking at deliveries for cars right it's like oh man this quarter should be you know larger than the last quarter no, it's kind of hard to figure that out just because of the way the projects are done. You know, you got to work in conjunction with whoever just doing it, whether that be, you know, public or private. And then on top of that, you have to wait for approvals, inspections, and then things change. So a build out of it, it's a little bit different than just delivering cars. Vehicles in the second quarter, beating Wall Street expectations of 438,000. Notice that production was 410,831 vehicles here with Tesla clearing out the surplus of the first quarter production. Tesla did retain their top spot as the world's largest EV maker as BYD delivered 426,039 fully electric cars in the second quarter. Still the 443,956 deliveries is a 14.77% increase on the first. So we beaten them on the first quarter, but we're still beating them, right? We're still beating those guys over there. Uh, we did deployed a uh, 4.053 megawatts of energy products in quarter one, the highest quarterly deployment yet. So if that was the highest in quarter one, then now we're on to a higher one in quarter two. So that's a growth and an increase on the energy storage products. Let's go from four to nine. First quarter this year and a 4.7% decrease from the second quarter of last year. We've already seen Tesla's stock price gain by around 15% this week alone. Elon posted after the Q2 results that once Tesla fully solves autonomy and has Optimus in volume production, anyone still holding a short position will be obliterated, even Gates. Even Gates. Shout out to Bill Scrapes. Bill Scrapes. I mean, Bill Gates. I mean, come on, Bill Gates. Once Tesla fully solves autonomy and has Optimus in volume production, Anyone still holding a short position will be obliterated, even Gates. The guy who wanted to do a joint venture or, let's say, wanted to do philanthropy work with Elon Musk, but at the same time is short in his company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Probably a little devious play right there on economics. Like, hey, man, can you afford to send some money for this charity nonprofit over here while I still short your company? Gates. Here's a wild number for you. Tesla has now delivered a total of 6,227,920 electric vehicles since Model S production started in 2012. And that's electric robots. We got that many robots hitting the streets. Well, you know, some are older than the other ones. You know, the hardware update has been constantly updated, but the neural network is still there. But for the majority of them, we are out here. Those are robots hitting the street collecting data. We were also waiting for growth in energy deployments, and this is just wonderful. Tesla deployed 9.4 gigawatt hours in the second quarter, a record high. The a record high, right, for the second, right? Because the last one was a record high in quarter one. Now, 9.4. Now, I don't know if it's going to be as high going into the next one, but one thing that we do have coming online is that Shanghai factory. That's going to be a mega factory, mega factory, giga factories where the cards are, mega factories where the batteries are. Deployments were up 157% compared to last year and up 132% from the first quarter. Tesla's next earning call will be held on Tuesday, July 23rd. 
A new Tesla patent filing illustrates a system and a method for automatically sanitizing enclosed spaces, particularly vehicle interiors that can be shared by multiple people. It shows possible systems using the vehicle's HVAC system for hot air and also sanitizing light and steam. The system described is able to detect temperature, humidity, presence of pathogens, and other indicators. It would be able to automatically execute the sanitation process when people are absent. The patent even shows a process of automatically extending the seatbelt for sanitation. Tesla also demonstrates the autonomous driving system changing the vehicle orientation, so it would increase the exposure to the sanitizing effect of sunlight. And if there is severe contamination of the vehicle, then external service robots will come to the rescue. This would be awfully useful for a robo-taxi or your Tesla vehicle that you've sent off to do ride-hailing in the Tesla network. In the Tesla's network. I wonder how that's going to look. Let's go to the comment section and see what people are saying before we head out on this video. Very interesting, but let's again see what it is. I don't know about the conspiracy theory about, you know, the Uber founder, but let's see. Everyone has eyes on NVIDIA and Tesla right now. It's unreal. We just have to keep an eye on these stocks. Fantastic video. I have incurred so much losses training on my own. I trade well on demo. All right, you're a trader, so you're always going to take an L. Long-term, guys, long-term. And as you hear me say that, I'm also not giving you financial advice. <laughs> Tesla is transforming to something mind-blowing. Of course, you guys are just getting brought up to speed about this. Of course, he is up to something. He is the CEO. It's his job. Well, a lot of CEOs don't do that. A lot of CEOs are out here surfing on holidays. I mean, that's okay. That was his personal holiday. I'm not clowning Mark Zuckerberg, but net net Elon was working. So shout out to the big homie. AI stocks are set to dominate 2024 and Tesla is the stock rapidly improving. And though I would prefer to have NVIDIA stocks because they're well positioned for long-term growth and support other AI companies. I know someone who's made over 200% with NVIDIA. I also consider the other recommendations you make. I think any company investing, guys, know the actual details about the company. Just don't be like the price, the price, the price. Okay? Know about the company you're talking about also. And also at the same time, let me show you that this is also not financial advice. And this was my first time watching your channel. And I was really engaged from the beginning of the video. Then at one minute and 53 seconds, you said the word important, clearly pronouncing a crisper, a crisp letter T at the beginning of the third syllable. I just so, what? I subscribed immediately. And if you pronounce the letter with it, it's come on, man, get out of here. Anyways, next one says, amazing that Tesla was always thinking around the corner. First, it was superchargers. You're welcome. And then it was manufacturing machine. You're welcome. And now robo taxi cleaning. It always makes sense after the fact, but for some reason, most don't pay attention to the game changers early enough. Yeah, most people heads are in the clouds. And even when it comes down to people you think who have Harvard degrees and went to MIT, Yale, and et cetera, on financing or brokers and they work in high end, doesn't mean that they understand the tech that's in the business because they studied PE ratios. Like, that's cool, that's fine and dandy and all, but understanding the company and the particulars of that said company and how their products and services can actually sell in the marketplace, that's not something that they went to yell about, right? And especially once they're in the suites, they're waiting for it to come on the sheet. They're sitting in the suites waiting for numbers on the sheets. And then a lot of advantage is actually in the trenches where you can go down to the ground, the trenches, the factories and see the price cutting and constantly see what they're developing and what the culture is in these companies and then take that analysis and say, hey, you know what? This looks like a profitable business here. But currently, even with the energy that we were speaking about, a lot of people with suits don't even know how the electrical grid works. And if you want to know that, you're going to have to check out the next video, okay? So that's going to be it. I'm going to end this at 25 minutes, 25 minutes for people to hate on Tesla, because as you already know, everyone hates the best company ever existent in America and the best African-American, Elon Musk. Elon Musk for the win, as always, there's nothing new with that. And let's sit back and watch one of his other amazing companies. Oh, my gosh. He has more than one. Yes, normies. He has more than one. See you guys on the next one. Like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you want to see more people hating on Tesla. But we're here to spread some love.
ignition. Stage separation confirmed. Hot stage confirmed. Ship under its own power. Who's confirmed? Stand up. View of the jettisoned hot stage. Booster, the primary goal today is to do a landing burn and a splashdown in the water. You can see those grid fins on your left hand screen rotating and turning to guide the booster. And there's that landing burn. Our primary goal is to get through the extreme heat of Starship reentry. Starship is approaching entry interface. Starship is passing through 100 kilometers altitude, good altitude for entry. Vehicle is passing through 85 kilometers altitude, flaps have control of a vehicle. Now ask me, how does it get better than this? What else? do you guys need to see in order to just be like, you know what? Elon for the win. What else do you need to see? You guys can't see splash down right now because the camera messed up, but see these guys jumping up and down. Elon for the win, SpaceX staff and team for the win, Tesla for the win, everybody for the win across. Elon Musk, the greatest African-American we got in the United States of America. Now, look at this. Flight five. This is what Elon's attempting to pull off. Man, got to love it. Got to love it. What else can you ask for from the greatest country in the world? USA all day. Everyone hates Elon. <laughs>